Well, hey folks, how are you? Welcome back to another exciting episode of In The Loop TV, hosting myself, Don Grant, CTC Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another exciting episode. Before we get started, I swear I won't bring this up again, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it, there's a little share button down there too, share it with anybody that you think might gain from this knowledge we bring to you as a cutting tool company. Hey, before we get started, I just wanted to bring this up. A lot of my customers and friends are telling me that this show kind of reminds them of something. And I asked them, what does it remind you of? And they go, did you ever see that show back when you were younger called Blue's Clues? Blue's Clues. I don't even know how you could equate cutting tools to that show, Blue's Clues. I mean, could you? Maybe? Well, hello there. How are you? Do you want to meet my friend, Harvey the End Mill? Hi, Harvey. How are you? Nah, nah, wouldn't work. Couldn't do it. Folks, this is a fun episode. We're going to talk about chip thinning. Now, how can chip thinning be fun? Well, we're going to deliver it so you understand it a little bit better. Chip thinning with end mills, which means the chip is getting thinner. Why does it get thinner? Well, I'm going to explain that. We're not going to talk about it now. We're going to talk about it next. Well, hey, folks. Welcome back to this episode of In The Loop TV. We're talking about chip thinning with end mills. Chip thinning. So what is chip thinning? We have to understand this. And I don't want you to get confused with hair thinning. I know, you were thinking it. Hair thinning or chocolate chip thinning. We're talking end mill chip thinning. So first we have to understand what the definition is of chip thinning. Now are you ready for this? Try not to fall asleep. Definition of chip thinning is when you take a radial step over that's less than 50% of the diameter of the end mill causes the chip to be formed to be less than what is programmed. Got that? Now let's run to the shop and talk about what it really is. So here's the start of this one on chip thinning, right? I'm sure when you saw this and you said chip thinning, it's like, wow, boy, is this going to be an exciting one. Let's talk about what chip thinning is. Let's talk about how to combat it and let's just understand it so we can use it a little bit better. That's what we're trying to do on this episode. When you take a radial step over with an end mill, understand radial step over, look at the chart, we're just gonna do a little reminder, is the side. That's when you step the end mill over. So radial chip thinning comes in when we step over less than 50% of the diameter. Okay, less than 50% of the diameter. It's pretty obvious, right? If you take a half inch diameter tool and you step it over less than a quarter inch, the chip that's being formed is going to be less than what you programmed. Now, don't get all caught up on the math and stuff like that. I'm going to show you how to combat this. I'm going to give you some tips, tricks on how to do this a little bit easier than running through all the math. Not really a math guy, I'm a spreadsheet guy, and I'm going to help you guys understand that too as well. Okay, so let's just look at the graph here real quick, okay? If we're taking an end mill and we're stepping it over at 50% of the diameter, take a look at this. I want you to understand this before we talk about combating it. If I step this over 50% of the diameter and I program this at 2 thou per tooth, okay? You can see at 50% of the diameter, my average chip thickness or my chip thickness is going to be 2,000. It's going to be what I programmed, right? As my radial step over starts going down, right? And we start coming around, that 2,000 per tooth is now getting thinner because 2,000 is right at 50%. So when you go down a little bit deeper, now you're less than 50% and you're causing that chip to be thinner than what you programmed. Now, why is this important to know? I'm going to tell you why it's important to know. It's important to understand and know this because a lot of standard speeds and feeds that you're going to get from us, our competitors, anybody else is going to be a book speeds and feeds. Now, I always bring that up. Book speeds and feeds are pretty raw. They're pretty crude. 
and they're not really dialed in. When you get a book speed and feed, what we're trying to tell you is that's the chip thickness that we want to create to give you the most life on that end mill, okay? So if you don't equate or account for chip thinning, the end mill is not going to act the way that it was designed. Quick example, right? We designed tools with a rake, with an edge prep, with a relief, all those angles. So we need to understand what the chip thickness is on the tool. That's the way it was designed. That's how it's engineered so we can get the right curl, the right chip breakage, and we can get underneath the edge prep on the end of the end mill. You don't need to know all that. I'm telling you, it's secret sauce, but we got to generate the chip. So when we tell you we need a 2,000 chip, that means the chip thickness needs to be 2,000. See where I'm going here? So if you don't equate for chip thinning, that chip is going to be less and we're going to have a problem. So now let's combat that. Okay, now I said I was a spreadsheet guy, so I'm going to show you guys this on a spreadsheet. If we take a half inch diameter tool, half inch, and I'm sorry for my European friends, I'm in inches, we'll get to metric and millimeters later. Right now, half inch is a little bit easier for me inch. If we take a half inch end mill and we step it over 10% or 50 thou, that means the radial step over is 50 thou, and we program a three thou inch per tooth. That's program, that's what you put in your software. Our chip is actually one eight, one thou eight tenths. See that? So we're less than 50% of that diameter. It's a half inch diameter tool. We only stepped over 10% and we programmed 3,000 and ended up with 1,008 tenths. That could be a problem for tool life. This is why we need to know this and understand that that chip is getting thinner when we're less than 50% of that diameter. Following so far? This is really important to understand because of all these high efficiency tool paths, right? High efficiency tool paths are doing what? They're taking light radials, heavy axial, and they're feeding real fast. They get away with that because of this chip thinning. That light radial causes the chip to be formed smaller and we can feed it faster. We can feed it faster because we need that chip thickness to be actually what the tool was designed to do. That's where HEM is, and that's where chip thinning comes in with high efficiency tool paths. So folks, this is what I want everybody to get out of this episode, right? We need to understand that when you take a radial step over less than 50%, the chip gets thinner. Got it. How do we combat that? What do we do at the spindle to make sure we understand what chip thinning is going on, when it's happening, and how do we combat it? That's what I'm going to talk about right now. So there's a lot of software out there, us included. We have the Machining Advisor Pro. You might have heard of it. I'm putting a little link up here again. You can look at the Machining Advisor Pro. When you punch in radial stepovers in our software and other people's software, it accounts for chip thinning. It tells you what the chip thinning is, and it has you feed it based on that radial stepover. But what if you don't have that? What's a good rule if you don't have that calculator and you just want to figure this out. Well, I got a tip for you, something I've been using for years that's really going to help you understand and equate for chip thinning. It's called a 10 2 2 5 2 and a half, 2 and a half. That's 10 2 2 5 2 and a half, 2 and a half. And let me explain what that is. Let's say you're not using a software that's accounting for chip thinning. Here's what I want you to do. If you are taking a 10% radial, 10%, I want you to look at the speeds and feeds that are offered by that end mill. I want you to take the surface foot and I want you to go up by two times, okay? Surface foot by two, and then I want you to take that chip load and I also want you to multiply that by two. So that's my 10 to two. 10% 10 radial, multiply the surface foot by two, multiply the chip load by two. That's gonna count by chip thinning, it's going to get you where you need to go. Now the five, two and a half, two and a half, I think you know where I'm going here. If it is a 5% radial, multiply the surface foot by two and a half, multiply the chip load by two and a half. That's going to put you where your chip thickness needs to be to make sure you're not rubbing and prematurely failing the end mill. 
So that's my rule. It's a 10 2 2, 5 2 1 2 1 2. Remember that? What is it? Explain it back to me. Now, I'll, I'll tell you, I can't really hear you. You guys know how this stuff works. I, I don't get to. You can put comments below, though. That's fine. 10 2 2, 10% 10 radial step over, two times the surface foot, two times the chip load in the book. That's if it's not equating for chip thinning. 5 2 1 2 2 1 2, 5% 5 radial. Two and a half times the surface foot, two and a half times the chip load. It's going to get you where you need to go, and it's going to make sure your end mill doesn't fail, and it's going to count, account for all this chip thinning stuff. Okay, folks, I think it's recap time. Let's talk about it. We're talking about chip thinning. What is chip thinning? When we step over less than 50% of the diameter, it causes the chip to be formed to be less than what we programmed. What does that mean? Well, if I program a 3,000 inch per tooth in my software and I'm only stepping over 10%, it causes that chip to be thinner. We don't want that. Why? Because the tool is going to prematurely fail. We program we design, we engineer tools for a certain chip thickness. We want to make sure that's correct. How do we combat that? Well, you can use a software like Machining Advisor Pro. It's going to do it for you. There's other software out there that'll do it for you. If we don't have that software, how do we do it? Well, we're going to use a rule I just explained called a 10-2-2, 5 2 and a half, two and a half. 2 and a half. What does that mean? If I'm stepping over 10%, here's what I want you to do. Go up on your surface foot by two times. Go up on your chip load by two times, multiply them by two. If I step over 5%, here's what I want you to do. Go up on your surface foot two and a half times what the book says. Go up on your chip load two and a half times. <sighs> That's a mouthful, but I'll tell you what, that's chip thinning. This is what's going to help you understand to make sure your tools don't prematurely fail and you get the life out of it. If I didn't explain everything and you need more help, please just put some comments below. That's fine. Call the number, the 800 number. I'll put it up on the screen again, and we'll be more than happy to explain it and help you even further. Well, hey, folks, that's it for this episode. Wow, a little bit shorter. We don't want to drag on chip thinning. Chip thinning can get a little bit boring. Hopefully you understand it a little bit better. But one thing I wanted to bring up with this, and hopefully you guys are having fun watching these episodes. I sure as heck am having fun delivering them. And it's great to get out to everybody that I can't see in person and explain some of these things in a broader audience. So I hope that you're enjoying them. I know I sure am enjoying them. But before I go, folks, three things in life we'll never get away from death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.